Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to Bible by the Fire in Day Z. I say it every week, this channel is out of control. Monday through Friday, we play survival games. Sunday, we study the Bible by a fire in Day Z. I might add a Wednesday component to this because you guys are so positive with your feedback. Put your prayer requests down below. I will pray for them. I want to start by sharing um, something my dad wrote called A Boy, A Ball, and a Dad. And it has a huge spiritual, scriptural implication, but it's a great story. It's a heartwarming story. I might cry reading it. it. Starts off, the buzzer sounded. A dream ended. Our basketball team had just been eliminated from the state playoffs. Heads down and fighting back tears, the team walked off the court. It had been a great season, the best in school history, our first league championship. Now the school had been around almost 40 years and we won the league championship high school. Uh, and a convincing win in the first round of the playoffs had fueled hopes of a state championship. That hope was now gone. For me, this is from my father's perspective, it had been a special time. I had two sons and another boy who lived with us on the team. Being the assistant coach afforded me the thrill of being at practices inside the huddle. I was especially grateful to be a close part of my oldest son Matthew's last season. That's me. You call me Sauce, but he calls me Matthew. It would be weird if he started calling me Sauce. <laughs> I continue uh, in his write-up here. Inside the dressing room, the tears were no longer restrained. The team sat quietly in a circle uh, with very little being said. My mind flashed back to a scene of Matthew 13 years earlier. It seemed like only yesterday. We were in our basement, and Matthew had just finished his first basketball game. I want to be a basketball player, Dad, but how can I practice? We have a ball but we don't have a hoop to shoot at. You have a hoop, son. Where? Our landlord wouldn't let us put one up, and we couldn't afford to buy like a fancy one, you know, one of those portable ones back in the day. I stretched out my arms and formed a circle in front of me. I'll be your hoop, son. As long as you have a dad, you have a hoop. We laughed, and Matthew took his very first shot. It was a bank shot off of my chest. We didn't have much, just a boy, a ball, and a dad. Every day, he would wait for me to come home so we could go down to the basement and practice. We spent hours together on that cold concrete floor. It was in upstate New York. He became pretty good. He made more shots than he missed. Just as important, less balls would ricochet off of my face. My arms got tired, but it was worth it. I don't know if he ever realized his hoop would often move just a bit to accommodate the flight of the ball. His love for the game grew. So did my love for him. After several months of practicing in the basement, Matthew found uh, an old basketball rim someone had thrown away and discarded a piece of plywood from a construction site. What kind of five-year-old boy is like going through other people's garbage and wandering through construction sites? But we made it happen. That, that's not in the article. I just read that. We made a portable hoop by nailing them to a wooden post and cementing it to an old garbage can. Countless hours of fun and practice followed the dedication of our very own driveway court. So it was a trash can with a piece of like plywood in it, or, you know, like a, a beam, a wooden beam, and we nailed a piece of plywood in a rim. It was only like eight feet tall in a garbage can, but that was our hoop. Countless hours. Our imaginations ran wild as we played against Larry Bird and Michael Jordan, and we always won. The next few years were filled with many peaks and valleys. Matthew worked extremely hard honing his skills. Six days a week, he shot a minimum of 300 shots per day with me as his rebounder. Uh, along with this, he would also do conditioning and quickness drills daily. Weather was never a deterrent. When we lived in New York, neither rain nor snow nor ice uh, would impact our routine. When we moved to Southern California, we practiced in temperatures over 120 degrees. These sessions became the highlight of my day and I found myself arranging my day and my schedule around them. There were seasons of success that fed our basketball dreams. There were also many discouraging times of sitting on the bench and waiting for opportunities that never seemed to come. I was running out of pep talks. I only knew so many speeches on tough times and building character. Sometimes I wondered when, or if at all, our work would pay off. Our times of practice kept the dream alive, but more importantly, it kept us together. His senior season, finally it paid off. He was a starter and one of the main scorers on a contending team. He endured some off games, but he also had some great ones. The team went on a 12-game winning streak and was ranked in the state polls, but now that season and Matthew's career as a basketball player were over. My mind returned 
from 13 years earlier, I searched for the words to encourage his disheartened young man and the youngsters in the room. Matthew sat across the room, head buried in his hands. He stood. I can still see it. He walked over and he threw his arms around me in a sweaty embrace. I love you, Dad. Thanks for all you've done. He held with a strength I'd never felt from him before. Neither one of us wanted to let go. I couldn't have received a greater trophy had we won the championship. As we stood unashamed hugging one another, it occurred to me it was that exact same position that I had been 13 years before, arms held in front of me, forming a circle. They were no longer a hoop. They held my son. I realized what the past years and all the struggles were really all about. It wasn't about points, winning games. It wasn't even about basketball. It was about a boy and his dreams and a dad who shared them. I realized that I too was crying. My tears were not for the end of a season. This was a moment somehow that marked the end of childhood. A son in my arms, no longer a boy. Somewhere on this journey, he'd become a man. He would go on and set more important goals and struggle through harder times, but he would always know greater joys. Maybe he too would be his son's first hoop. I wanted that hug to last forever. But this was a time of letting go. Matthew was no longer a five-year-old little boy shooting a ball through his dad's arms in a basement. Yet in that moment, I knew a part of me would always embrace him, and somehow a part of him would always embrace me. Oh, how I thank God for what he can do with just a boy, a ball, and a dad. I share that, and I knew it would be long. And I knew it would be hard to read. Uh, because it wasn't about the ball at all. It was about my relationship with my dad. And Jesus in John chapter 21, after he rose from the dead, said, meet me in Galilee. The disciples went there and they said, hey, what are we gonna do? I don't know, we need some fish. And they went out on the boat and caught nothing. They were out there all night and they caught nothing. We need some fish, but they caught nothing. They saw a man on shore who said, throw your net on the other side. And when he said that, they knew it was Jesus because he had done this exact same thing three years earlier. And they did, they caught a huge haul of fish. They went to the shore, and it says in 21 verse 9 of John, When they landed, a fire of burning coals were there with some fish on it and some bread. And then he spent time with them. Why, what do these two stories have in common? The disciples, we need the fish. Oh, out all night trying to get the fish. Then they catch the fish, and when they got to sea, they saw there was already a fire, and Jesus already had fish. He already had bread. It wasn't about the fish at all. It was about getting to know Jesus. It was about getting to trust their Heavenly Father. It was about seeing how God could work in their lives. Just like with me and my dad, it wasn't about basketball, it wasn't about a game, it wasn't about throwing a ball through a hoop, it wasn't about points and, and winning games or trying to chase championships. It really was about the relationship. And so much of your life is about the relationship. We think it's about the struggle. We think it's about the ball. We think it's about the fish. But it's really about growing in love and faith and trust with God. And he's good enough to bless you with the fish. He blessed them with the fish. They, they thought they needed it. They didn't. He already had it. But he worked in their life through the fish to build the faith. What is it in your life that's going on that has you so concerned? God's already got it. God's already cooking. He's already got everything you need. But you better believe he's going to use that thing in your life that you feel is important or that you feel you need to work in your life and in your relationship to build trust, to build faith, to build love. Oh, how I thank God for what he can do with a boy, a ball, and a dad. The disciples, oh, what I thank God for what he can do with a fish and a net and a fire. It's not about the things we think it's about. It's about growing in your faith, growing in your trust, and most importantly, learning and growing in your love of God. And he'll use all these things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33.
So what are you struggling with today? Say, God, let me learn to love you more through this. And I know you'll provide all my needs. Let me not stress. Let my heart not be troubled. Let me learn to trust you deeper. Well, thank you for listening to me fumble through that old piece of paper that my dad wrote a long time ago, sniffling and crying all along. But that's so important that we learn what it's really all about. All of these struggles are really about getting to know God, learning to love Him more, trust Him. Thanks for listening to Bible by the Fire. Share it with somebody. And until next time, keep carrying the fire. <laughs>